Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I will show you how to make these shaker badge reels that are seen most often on my Instagram. Basically what a shaker is, is a resin piece that's slightly hollow on the inside, filled with shaker bits, covered with a clear acetate, and then domed with epoxy again. And it's either left dried or filled with some type of fluid to create that snow globe effect. And let's go ahead and get started. So to start, let's talk about the epoxy that we will be using today. In the past videos, I have talked about using Promarine. However, in my recent purchases of Promarine, either from Amazon or straight from the warehouse, it has left a slightly yellow tinge in the bottle and a yellow tinge on the finished resin piece. So since then, I have switched to less resin epoxy. It can be found on Amazon. Um, it is a very thin consistency. It's still a one-to-one -one ratio. You can measure it by volume or by weight, and it leaves absolutely zero micro bubbles. However, when using it to dome, there is a slightly longer wait time. So before, I would wait five minutes with Promarine before doming, and now I'm having to leave the epoxy out for 20 minutes so that it gets that honey consistency that I like to use when I'm doming my pieces. So we'll start by measuring out our epoxy. I am going to use a paper cup today because I don't feel like cleaning out my silicone measuring cups. And as you see here, I will have a oral syringe and my part A that I've placed in a squeeze bottle for more control. I'm just gonna expel the air out of my oral syringe there. And for my project today, I'm gonna need 20 milliliters of epoxy total so it is a one-to-one -one ratio so I'll need 20 milliliters of part A and 20 milliliters of part B. I have always used the squeeze bottle syringe method only because I feel like it gives me consistency over my finished resin pieces. It always cures the way I want it to, when I want it to, and overall I believe it minimizes mess and waste. Typically when I'm done with the syringe, what I'll do is expel all the fluids out of it, leave it pulled back and open, and store it on top of the squeeze bottle that it belongs to. Then I will grab a large popsicle stick and mix my epoxy. I love using the large popsicle sticks because I feel like I can scrape down all the sides of the measuring cup and get a really even mix on my epoxy. If your epoxy is not evenly mixed, your resin pieces will not cure no, long, no matter how long you've left it out for. I know some people have said that popsicle sticks cause microbubbling, but it's never been an issue for me. So now I'll just grab a measuring cup and the glitter of my choice. And with some type of measuring utensil, I just have these metal spoons that I use for everything so I can get the same consistency every time. You're just gonna pour out the amount of glitter that you would like. For me, it's going to be three scoops of the largest spoon on this set here. And now I just have a work trade line with a silicone mat from Maple Street Supply. I will also be using the two inch round shaker mold also from Maple Street Supply as well. Grabbing the first glitter, I'm just going to add a little bit of epoxy and then mixing it with a popsicle stick. I don't have a set amount. I basically just pour enough epoxy into the glitter until I get the color that I want. And once I'm happy with it, I pour it into the silicone mold. With the silicone mold, you want to cover the ring area and the indented part. And once you've got all your resin poured into the mold, you just want to pick up the mold gently and tap it a little bit to remove any potential micro bubbling that could be forming. Again, like I said, I don't have microbubbling issues with Promarine. This is just a baking habit that I have. You just want to tap all the bubbles out. Once you have your epoxy poured into its silicone mold, you're going to want to leave it for 8 hours to 24 hours for a full cure. Just based on the brand of epoxy that you're using, for me, 8 hours is more than enough to demold my resin pieces from its silicone mold. Now for the doming process. What you want to do is go ahead and mix your epoxy again. And for me, I'm using Let's Resin, so I'm going to need to leave this mixture out for 20 minutes after mixing so that it can thicken up to a honey-like consistency, which makes it perfect for the doming process. 
After eight hours, the resin piece is now cured and ready to be removed from its silicone mold. Then I'm going to just grab a clear film. These films can be purchased on Amazon and I'm on a permanent marker. I'm going to place a clear film on top of my resin piece and trace out the entire shape, making sure to cover the entire hollow area. Now that my shape is traced, I'm going to just use a pair of scissors to cut the clear film. If I was making more pieces, I could definitely use the Cricut to do this part for me as well. Then I am going to grab a alcohol swab and I'm just going to clean off the permanent marker that I've used, clean up the clear film and dry it on a paper towel to get it ready to be placed on top of my resin piece. Now we're going to drill a hole through the top of our resin piece just right through the lip right there. I'm going to use my handheld Dremel drill, but in the past I have also used a hand drill as well. And I'll put the link to both in the description box below. Once you've got the hole drilled, what you want to do is just use a brush here to dust off all the little resin dusty flakes. Um, I would definitely recommend doing the drilling over a trash can just so that all the resin dust ends up in the trash can instead of all over your workspace. And then as you can see here, it's just a tiny little hole right through the lip of your shaker pieces. Now I'm just going to scoop out some of these shaker bits that I would like to use for this particular piece. Um, and these shaker bits can be purchased through Maple Street Supply or even on Amazon. I do want a little bit of sparkle, so I'm going to add some chunky glitter as well. Chunky glitter definitely works way better than fine glitter in these situations. Okay, so now it's time to assemble all the pieces. I'm going to use a UV resin here to just outline the lip of my resin piece. And I want to make sure that the UV resin does cover the entire lip. If not, you won't create a good seal and you will have a leak. Then I'm going to place the clear film on top of the resin piece. And using a silicone brush tool, I'm patting the clear film down into the resin, um, making sure that it is pressed firmly and sealed top and bottom. Do not worry about the UV resin looking bumpy or anything like that because this will be fixed once we dome the piece. Now that I have everything pressed down just the way I like, I am going to use a UV light to cure the UV resin. According to this packaging, it takes one minute. Once the piece is fully cured the way I like, I am going to use a squeeze bottle filled with baby oil to fill my shaker piece. This baby oil will give it that snow globe effect that most shakers have. You can also leave it dry at this point and make it a dry shaker if that's something that you would like as well. I'm just going to clean up the top with some alcohol wipe and then fill the hole with some more UV resin. Tap it down a little bit because I want to make sure that the UV resin is in the hole, on top of the hole, just fully sealing off the area. And then once again, I'm curing it with the UV light for one minute. Once the UV resin is cured, it should allow you to shake the resin piece as so. And everything should be floating around nice and smooth. And there you go. So now all we have to do is add the vinyl on top. Here I'm just using Oracle 651 vinyl. It sticks really well for me with the Frisco Red Grid Transfer Tape. Once I have the vinyl added the way I'd like, it is now time to dome the piece. So now for the doming process, I will need liquid latex and a silicone brush. What I like to do is add the liquid latex to all the areas that I do not want the resin to touch. This is an extra step, but it saves a lot of time because with the doming process, what makes it intimidating is if you don't pour enough or you under pour, you won't get that perfect clear glass finish to your shaker pieces or your resin pieces in general. So by taking the extra time to coat the entire resin piece with this liquid latex here, um, any dribble of resin that may overflow from your resin piece will not stick to your resin piece in the final product. And trust me, it's going to save you way more time than you think. 
the only downside to using liquid latex is one, it stinks, and two, you gotta work fairly quickly because it does dry really quick. I've also heard some people use Elmer's glue. Um, I personally don't like Elmer's glue only because I'm impatient and I can't wait for the glue to dry fast enough for myself. So here I'm just going to place my shaker piece upside down on a raised silicone baking sheet just so that I can also coat the back with the liquid latex as well. Like I said, the goal is to avoid any resin dribble from dribbling onto my final piece. Once I have this fully covered, it takes just two to three minutes for the liquid latex to fully dry onto the resin piece, and then I'll flip it over and dome the top part with the epoxy that we've had sitting there thickening for the last 20 minutes. Now using a large popsicle stick, I'm going to drop a large dollop of the thickened epoxy onto the shaker piece, making sure to cover everything as I move towards the outer edges. I like to get down to eye level on this part just to make sure that every part of my shaker piece is covered with the epoxy. Then using a heat tool by DeWalt set on high, just going to heat the epoxy just for a little bit to prevent any micro bubbling from forming. Then, once everything's coated the way I like, I am going to leave the piece to cure for an additional 8 hours or even overnight. Once the piece has cured, I will inspect it just to make sure that it's covered all the way just the way I like it. And as you can see here, this is where the epoxy had dribbled over onto the latex. And all you have to do is peel off the latex. Trust me, this will save you a lot of time. Your resin piece will come out nice and smooth, no need for additional sanding. And it's also very satisfying when you peel off the latex. And there you go. All we have to do now is attach our shaker piece to a batch reel. Now to attach the batch reel to the shaker piece, I like to use E6000. Just add a dollop onto the batch reel, fix my shaker piece on top, press firmly and wait 20 minutes for it to dry. Once everything is dry and permanent, I attach it to my backing card and it's all ready to go. And that is it you guys thank you so much for watching if you have any requests or any questions please leave a comment down below and i can't wait to see you on the next one bye